Grant Dania now. It's Grant Dania. The gold logie this year. Oh my god, it's Grant Dania. And our mom, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. And George, affectionately known as Large Sarge. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. And George. I don't know what's happened to my microphone here. It's like falling over. How are you today? Grant's been in the studio. I am so good. I am so good. Is that are believable? You? Yes. Why That's does everybody good. question that? Why? In fact, I just did the pet hate thing. Like I really dislike it when people come up to me and say, how are you? And I say, yeah, I'm good. And they go, no, how are you? Are you actually okay? It's like they can Why? see something that I can't. Yeah. I don't... I, my first response now is when people say, how are you? I say, I am fantastic. I am living the dream. And We're living some sort of dream, aren't we? That's right. Yep. And then it's always followed up with another question. Why? What's been happening? I'm like, mm. it's life. We're healthy. We're happy. Well, some of us are healthy. I have to say some because um, Grant was scheduled to be in this record. Um, he was. But... His back is very stiff since racing in the six hour. Okay. So, um, yeah, so it's, he's just, it's just fatigued. Right. So I said to him, he really needs to go and have some Chinese cupping. So I love there's cupping. a, yeah, have you done it much? Yeah, Kylie cups me every so often. It's a great sensation. What? No, I think that's different cupping. You mean, Chinese. Like the proper cupping, like the cups that suction up your skin. Does Carly do that? That's part of her job, yeah. What? Mm-hmm. I yeah. did not know this. She has so skills she can in those do areas a- and it's a wonderful sensation. And then like afterwards you've got like the big purple bruises and round circles all over your back. Yeah. 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 So where did she learn to do that, do you know? Well, the place that she sort of practices at um, trained her up in that area and um, wow. away she went. It's, um, yeah, really cool. I think they, um, like, send, like, micro traumas to parts of your body and then, yeah. it, like, heals or something like that. You and GD would probably know better. I've just done it for fun. But um, it's I super don't, helpful. I don't know. All I know is that I... Last year, after my big night at the Logies, when <laughs> when Grant wasn't, when I didn't have to weekend at Bernie's, him, you know, along the red carpet, and um, because you know now we can talk about it, um, because he was quite unwell after the show that we filmed, and I I just pictured that taking him along the red carpet would be, you know, me carrying him, and he was actually okay that night, so I celebrated or let my hair down, had far too much champagne and really injured myself clearly on the dance floor, um, mm. having a great time until the week after when I put my back out um, right. and I tried acupuncture and um, I want to say bloodletting, but that might not be right. But anyway, in the cups. So whatever she did was almost miraculous. It was Amazing. crazy. Yeah. I had the biggest, blackest, purplest spots on my back and I remember it like being a little bit uncomfortable when she was mm. doing it, but incredible. So this morning I said to Grant, you've been walking around kind of acting like you're an old man now for a couple of days. I'm going to call up and see if I can get you in. Um, and she had a cancellation. So I was like, great, take you in. Um and she did acupuncture on him and, I don't know, put electrodes or something on the, um, on the needles Ooh. and turned it up and then did the cupping. <laughs> and so I went to pick him up before the podcast record and his facial expressions um, showed a, a, um, a story uh, of somebody who did not look very happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was a facial very polite expression of enough. pain. <laughs> yeah, facial expression of I hate you and thanks for putting me through this pain. Um, anyway, he's laying Hopefully out on the lounge feeling sorry. It will. Yeah. It will. 
It's incredible. It's kind of funny, like when you get the cups on your back, you look a little bit like a um, porcupine or like a, an echidna or, or like a stegosaurus, the dinosaur. Yes. Like big bumps all over your back. Um, yeah, it's an interesting look seeing your skin all suctioned up like a big blob of, you know, flesh that it is. But, um, yeah. Well, the um, lady who I saw in Bathurst, she's um, a Chinese um, acupuncturist and she does Chinese medicine. Her name's Ivy. I'll give her a, a plug because she's a massive fan. Well, she will be now. I'll tell <laughs> her that, you know, I've mentioned her. She um she was saying to me when I had it that I had a lot of dampness. That was what she, how she explained it. And I was In your like, back. Like Yeah. But oh. she was calling it was like dampness and and like I moisture. wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so just looking up cupping therapy is a form of pseudoscience. Um, so it's an alternative medicine practiced primarily in Asia but also in Eastern Europe, the Middle East and Latin America. Um, Chinese, it's been around for a really long time. Helps with so, pain, inflammation, blood flow. Helps with fevers. Poor appetite, indigestion, acne, psoriasis, anemia, stroke, stroke, the nasal congestion. just helps any kind of medical issue. Yeah. Get the cups out. Yeah. Wow. We'll have to ask. Um, GD, how it goes. Um, no, we don't have to ask him. He's too whingy. But we'll have to ask Carly. Hours after cupping, avoid exposure to caffeine. Alcohol, mm. sugary foods, and drinks. So take that Maccas away from him that he's eating in the <laughs> lounge room right now. No, he's not eating anything. He's you know, they're swearing. Um, but why is that? Why can't you have those things after? Is it because it uh, these opens foods up your blood slow vessels? down your body's ability to process the treatment. So it slows down, um, ah. I guess, the effect of cupping. Yeah, right. So hot Ivy showers. said don't, yeah, don't have a hot shower. Hmm. Or intense Very interesting. exercise. Yeah, okay. Well, how many people go and have cupping and then go and do in- – well, I suppose if they're athletes. I don't know. I mm. wouldn't know because I'm not an athlete. You'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> yeah. But we were going to talk about alien stuff today and I was actually really quite pumped. Me too. Um, Conspiracy yeah. Denya is my favourite kind of grant, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, because he's got quite a few – stories that he wanted to share. But anyway, we'll have to share that next time. Yeah. Um, and the next episode is the final episode for this season. Yeah, final episode. And I think it's about time that we do something big and special just to round off what could possibly be one of the most <laughs> weirdest seasons ever. Terrible seasons. <laughs> like it started yeah. okay. Um, with some really amazing guests, but they were pre-recorded at the back end of last year. Then we came back yes. after our three-month hiatus and did yeah. a few things. We were meant to be a threesome, but it was just the two of us. And then, yeah, yeah. look, last episode uh, next week, if there's anything you want us to do, slide into the DMs. But regardless, there will be something cool. I mean, this podcast is known for making a fun parody, a fun skit something extraordinary, something entertaining. So we can guarantee there'll be something wild happening soon. But seeing as you have been holidayed and rested mm. when this episode comes out, yes. um, will you be sharing any news? Like are you likely to go off on this holiday and just come back married? Because it just oh, seems to be kind of imagine. your way of doing things. Yeah, Yeah. I mean like. I'm a very spontaneous human nowadays and I'm just, <laughs> you know, getting it's all true tattoos and um, just being oh super God. spontaneous. But who knows what will happen? I'm actually um, would have gone to a mate's wedding, which will be really nice. I'll be emceeing at that and I'll be holidaying up and down the coastline of New South Wales and Queensland. So if you saw me, um, it was great to see you. <laughs> this is really hard to speak in <laughs> future <laughs> Scenarios. So we're having, so we're having to rush through all these episodes so that George can go on a holiday. 
Um, pretty much. So, what, how many of your friends are married now? Because you're pretty young. Oh, not many. Um, I'd say like not even, not even five of them yet. Not even five. No, I mean I'm That's 23 a lot for this your age. year, and um, some of my friends are sort of yeah in the early twenties, and yeah, I think about five maybe have have been married so far. That's quite a lot. Well, yeah, people are getting married young. Like early on in their life now, aren't they? So have they been with their partners for a long time or they just... Yeah, some um, are like high school sweethearts and then some uh, have just, you know, been together for a couple of years kind of thing. Um, mm. No divorces yet, so that's good news. All the divorces happen around my age. So What's that, 29? Yeah, really young. Um, I've had... A number of my friends um, go through separations this year and last year. So it's um, most of the ones, uh, except for two, but most of them have been married for since their 20s. So that's, look, I think any divorce or any breakup is sad, but. Um, Sometimes it's yeah. for the better. Do you know what I think? I. I'm a very different person now to what I was when I was in my 20s. So yeah. there's a lot of growing up to go through and um, it's not for everyone, but I look back at who I was um, dating, uh, you know, in my 20s and just before that and there is no way in hell that that same personality or person uh, I would date or mm -hmm. be even attracted to now. Yeah. Um, I just feel like I've changed or, or grown up so much. So. Mm. Look, I, I feel um, a little bit uncomfortable in this conversation given that I'm only <laughs> in my early 20s and have um, a fiancé and uh, haven't done oh, yeah, too much dating prior to yeah. that. But... <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Life's good. You know, you know my mum and dad celebrated 50 years of um, marriage this year. That's and beautiful. Yeah, it is. Did they and say what the secret is, what their formula is for 50 years married? Uh, they just really like each other and Not they're love, just life. best friends. And well, I think there has to be – I think you have to be friends as well right. as lovers because – after all the romance and the the lust dies down, the rumpy pumpy, you have you have to be good friends. Mm. So, and they definitely have always been good friends, and um, yeah, they've got a beautiful relationship. It's lovely, what but do they've you been do together to... since my mum was fourteen. Wow, it's a long time. How do you celebrate fifty years? Because don't you do like a certain present every single anniversary? Is is there something specific to fifty oh, years? Who does that? My who? uncle and auntie what? do that. It's so like one year it's like leather, the next it's paper. Um, it could be like there's a theme for each year, and you got to buy yeah, a present I have around heard that. that. Yeah. So imagine You're what right, fifty that's... would be. I don't know. Fifty would have to be. Well, I say diamonds for every birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry for every anniversary, every birthday, every present has to be diamonds. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but it's, it's like I, your uncle and auntie would be the only couple I think I've ever heard of that really that do that. Yeah, do people do that? I think so. I need. I, reckon I it's need common. to Google this again. Is this is another? It? Is this another Rubik's cube situation? Possibly. <laughs> I'm going to offend everyone again. But maybe I'm just really isolated. Look, maybe no. I haven't had a big. To be honest, my uncle and auntie are the only people I know that do that. So that's me just assuming that other people do. Maybe, yeah, surely there's other people though. If, if you're a listener of the podcast and you do that anniversary you gift, go. surely. So what are traditional anniversary gifts by year? First anniversary is paper. Well, like mm. to be fair, on your first anniversary, I think that that is such a big, um, your first year of marriage is hard. It's, it's it's hard because it's your first year trying to um, live as husband and wife. And even if, well, I mean, this this is, you know, in my case, um, even if you've lived together before you became married, 
I still feel like when you have um, formalized your relationship and you've, you know, become husband and wife and you've you've become married, I feel like there it feels different or it did for me than yeah, just right. being de facto. Yeah, I felt like it had um, a lot more meaning and I feel like it um, – it felt a lot more special. That's so, so lovely to hear. That's so nice. Yeah. So, but it's also really hard because you go, "Oh my god!" Now there's no backing out. This is it. You know, we're not just <laughs> flatmates anymore. I'm this committed. is it. We're married. We're yeah. We we've signed our names to... on a piece of paper. Exactly, and you know, in my case, we've I've taken you know my husband's name. Like this is this is a really big deal. On that. Do you feel like mm. a sense of um, like identity being lost when your last name is like no longer on paper, if that makes sense? Um, do you know, I got asked this the other day by Evie Jones on a podcast and I, uh, I, I always, I, first of all, I never thought I would ever take um, my husband's surname, like ever. I just was so proud of my name and I always thought that I wanted to keep my name um, for sentimental reasons because I'm the the last of my kind of um, family name because there's yeah. no boys to carry on the, the name. Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to be a boy. I was supposed to be John Wayne, John oh, Wayne cool. Rogers. Oh, my God, so bogan. Like the movies. Um, like the movies. <laughs> and my sister was going to be um, – um, Oh. Remember his name? Another movie but it was like, actor? Yeah, Clint. Um, Clint. Oh, God. Clint Stanaway from the Today Show. No, Clint. Oh, my gosh. I, I can't. I, my brain's not Clint working Clint Eastwood. Today. Clint Eastwood, thank you. Um, or Charles Bro Bronson or something. Like wow. My dad was really into Western movies, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as you can tell. Yeah. Um, but I ended up being Cheryl Ladd. Um, but because I was the last in our our family name, I felt this sense of responsibility to hang on to it. Sure. But then I married Grant and I realised that we wanted to have a family um, mm -hmm. and I may have even been from talking to Grant's mum, I realised that my children would have a different name, a different surname to me if I didn't take Grant's surname. True. Wow. So there they, you go. So they would, they would be the Denya children and I would uh -huh. be Cheryl Rogers. So okay. would I become Cheryl Rogers Denya? Yeah, the which hyphenated just, scenario. Which I don't think I suit a hyphenated name. I mm. feel like that's just really um, regal. A bit, it's not it's a lot of letters. Um. It is a lot of letters. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> I decided because of that that I would take Grant's name um, because, so that my kids would have the same surname as me. So did I feel a loss of identity? I don't think so. I just felt like um, my identity had grown. Yeah. What a beautiful answer. Yeah. Thank you for coming on to my podcast and answering my no questions worries. about Thank you. last yeah. names, the last name podcast. But in going back to after our first year of marriage, which mm. was hard, if Grant had turned around and given me a piece of paper for my first anniversary gift, I think I would have been slightly pissed off because... Um, yeah. What it, are some like, good paper gifts? Like a book? Oh, a book. That could be good. Yeah, but is that classified as paper? I don't know. Uh, and, and where did these ideas come from is what I want to know. So, look, send us an email. We're really struggling here with, <laughs> with, uh, with Rubik's Cubes and also with, the anniversary with traditional. Gifts. Yes. Like, like who even comes up with this, you know, leather fruit? Like fruit. Candy. Your sixth anniversary candy or iron. Iron. You know, I feel like these were written, you know, or, or they've been, I don't know, it's like from the 1800s or something. Yeah. Someone's gone, you know what would make a great present? 
paper. That's yeah. hard to make. Yeah, it's a weird... Co- maybe it's... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's an odd one. But I guess maybe it's a good mm. guideline if you're struggling for gifts. You can just refer to the old 1800s uh, anniversary <laughs> gift line. Oh, yeah, it's snacks this year. It's iron. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. I'll go down to the shops and sort that out. Yeah, I <clears throat> I think that the best gifts come from the heart. So, you know, mm. have you ever bought a gift for someone where you you just know that this is something, like you've really thought about them, their personality, what, the, what sorts of things they really love, and yeah. you've put a lot of thought into it? Mm-hmm. A body pillow for Carly. Oh, so you you did get a body pillow for Carly? Got a body pillow. She's always wanted it. It helps with her sleep. It helps with her well-being. I think it's a very thoughtful gift. Yeah. See, I I think that um, maybe some snoring um, nose spray might have been a much nicer gift for her <laughs> considering yeah. she hasn't been able to sleep because of your snoring. True. Hey, maybe I should, because of those apps that you can get where you can record like what you say in your sleep and how you sound. What? Yeah, like it picks up any kind of motion or sound while you sleep and it gives you like a rundown of how your night went. Maybe maybe we should put what? to the test and see how bad my snoring is. Yes. Maybe that what can be the big what? plan for the next final episode. We'll just listen to my snoring. <laughs> What are these apps and why are people why do people need to be recorded when they're asleep? I think um it's a fun thing, but also if it's you were to go <laughs> <laughs> Hey Johnny, listen back to my snoring last night. What yeah, a cack. Here's thirty minutes of me <laughs> nearly choking. Um I think yeah, it's the fun thing, but it's also like for sleep apnea too, and to help doctors like really understand how messed up somebody's sleeping pattern could be or, you know, when you stop yeah, right. breathing, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I think there's a, a fun side to it, but also a, a medical, um, really helpful side to it. Do you talk in your sleep? I do. Yeah, I do talk in my sleep. I tend to say phrases that I would say on air, like on the radio. So I might be sleeping oh, and I've so- been known to say, coming up in two hits time. This is hit. Local news briefing is next on hit. My God, just so you're just working. From the radio. I'm still working whilst asleep. I'm not even getting paid. Is that exhausting? Is that ex- <laughs> like, do you wake up in the morning to go, oh my God, I've got to go back and keep doing this because you've done it all night? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you could have like a nine hour dream about being at work and you're like, far out. I'm about to go and do it in real life now. This is bullshit. So there has to we have to get a dream expert back on. Hey, have you yes. had your dream about your angry Krispy Kreme donut? Man yeah, coming out. Yeah, the Krispy Kreme donut catcher. That was um a reoccurring dream. Um and since we had the wonderful dream interpreter on the show, um I don't mm. think I ever had that dream again. Or if I did, it would have only been once. Um the dreams are now yeah, just a standard day at work, so not as exciting really. Do you think maybe you're overworking? That's the reason why you're dreaming about working? Potentially. There are some weeks where, as you know, you feel like all you do is work, 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 work. Um, Mm. And, yeah, when it's popping up in your dreams at night, that is not overly handy. Um, No. Hence why I'm taking a two-week holiday. Yeah, I think that's good. Or have taken a two-week holiday, I should say. Yes. (laughs) Hey, can we uh, yes. do two truths and a lie? It was meant to be GD, but we're going to yes. do your version today. Is that okay? okay. All right. Yep. Here we go. Roll do the it. opener. Two truths and a lie. 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 Now, because I'm such an honest person, I found this very difficult. Which is not a bad thing. I think it's good Isn't that it? you... Okay, I right. think it's good that you struggle to lie. You're a very honest person. Or I've just told everyone everything about my life because I just talk nonstop and therefore there's nothing really that people don't know. I don't know. Um, 
Okay, so I studied cellulite treatment with a French school called Endemology. Okay. I am I've lost my license twice. I'm highly allergic to grass. Oh gosh. Okay, I'm going to go back to the losing your license twice and this is not being offensive or anything, but I feel like <laughs> On this podcast, there's been a few times where GD has had a go at the way oh, you drive. He hasn't. Yes, I don't think I've heard that your license has been taken away twice. Can I ask questions about these? Things? I don't know. You created the game, so you tell me. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> uh, how long was your license taken away from you the first time you lost it? Six months. That's a long time. How old were you? Twenty. Five. And what job were you working at that time? I was working at Channel 7. 25, Channel 7. Yeah, okay, six months for that. That's um, tricky. Who was driving you around to all of your new stories? It was a long time, actually. And then I, Noel, I was working on the COS desk. And then I actually left and moved back to Bathurst. And, true story, then started selling cars at Bathurst Holden. And couldn't drive people off the car lot because I didn't have a license. I had to drive them to the the edge ah, of the road okay. and then say, "Okay, now it's your time. Time to drive." Yeah. What a time! Okay. Um. What was the third one? Did you say? Uh I studied cellulite treatment with a French school mm-hmm. called Endemology. And the other one was. I am highly allergic to grass. I've never like, seen you. Like almost anaphylaxis. Okay. Allergic. So I, I can't reckon, eat grass. I reckon the grass one is the lie. Is it? Is that, is that your final answer? I'm locking in grass is the lie. You're not allergic to it. <sighs> Do I have to prove that these are lies or truth? I don't know. I do have a bit of paper here. Um, so I am highly allergic to grass, oh, like wow. really, really badly allergic. Yeah. And I didn't realise how allergic until my latest blood test results. Um, and, yeah. It's, so which one's the lie? Uh, that I lost my licence oh, twice. Oh, no. <laughs> I lost my licence once and I was 25 and I did work at, Channel 7 and then I left and what I told you was true, but I didn't lose it a second time. Twice. Oh, that's a tricky one. That's very tricky. Yeah. Well, there you go. That was. Two truths and a lie. 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 It was so funny when I asked Grant, I said, can you help me come up with two truths and a lie? And he's like, no. And he goes, tell, oh, I don't know, have you said that you sprayed someone on a plane with breast milk? And I was like, (laughs) but that is true. That is true. (laughs) Yeah. And he goes, yeah. I said, I've already told everybody that. That's been headlines. Um, Well, next time um, we do this, it will be with, GD, so he will be our uh, last two truths and a lie for season 11. And um, if you, as a listener, once again, want to get involved with this game, uh, slide into my We'll give you a prize. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Maybe that antler that is on the shelf behind (laughs) you. Can you tell this whole office has been designed by someone – so it like everything was really perfectly placed. I can't turn the camera around too much more, but everything was like strategically like an interior placed. Interior designer came in and yeah. made it beautiful. And then I just came in and just like jammed stuff in there. So anyway, it's I all think good. It looks good. It's um, thank you. I mean, look at my temporary. Background. It's pretty temporary yeah. too. What, are they all trophies up the top on your shelf? Up the very top, that is um Carly's Lego. So she's what? got like a um, Iron Man, a hand, and some other character that I've never seen before. But she's really big into the Lego. 
<laughs> Carly and then is an so Accra. surprising. Yeah, the Accra. That's and pretty impressive. And a little Steve Irwin as well. I'm really proud what? of that little Steve Irwin. Have you what? ever seen these ones? I'll bring it up to the camera. Okay. No, I haven't seen a little Steve Irwin. With a crocodile. Ah. Oh, that's so cool. Very cute, isn't it? Wow. It could almost be Robert now. Literally. Have you been yes. watching him on I'm a Celebrity? I've been seeing like the best of um, TikToks. I regret to say I haven't seen any of I'm a Celebrity because I am a um, huge fan of Deal or No Deal, which replays while my show is on. While my radio show was airing between nine and midday, it replays on Channel 10. Deal Does or it? No Deal. Yeah. So it's super distracting. I'm just watching GD um, yeah, while right. giving away cash myself and playing all the hits. So it's a good time. I enjoy it. I love he's, it. He's very good at it. But anyway, I was just going to, I was going to pay him the compliment. Stop embarrassing today. me. Yeah. No, no, I was he's... going to like, he is super amazing at that job. Yeah, he it's is. True. He makes everybody feel so special and involved. He makes the people on the show, the stars of deal or no deal. GD mm. is just, the guy there making everybody else shine whilst still being very, very shiny. So mm. bloody love your work, GD. Gold Logie, let's go. 2.0. Yeah, 2.0. <laughs> um, this was not on our notes for today. However, okay. I just found this book and I wanted to share it. So, you know, have you ever had a book before where it's just, I don't know, it's just got so much goodness in it? This one's called Notes from the Universe. Have you heard of that? No, by Mike cool, du- by Mike Dooley, um, and it's new perspectives from an old friend. So, this is what I like to do: I pick a page just by closing my eyes, and I open it up, and this is your note from the universe. Okay. When you understand someone, truly understand someone, no matter who they are, you cannot help but love them, even though you might not always love what they do. You knew that. Okay, just as true is that for anyone you feel less than love for, no matter who they are, it's because you do not truly understand them. No, you do not have to like what they do either, nor are you supposed to stay with them. You get to decide those things. What a beautiful way to finish this episode. Oh, yeah. You've put us on the wrong Zoom again, George. <laughs> I was hoping <laughs> that I'd be able to wrap it up without you even knowing that. But that's a lovely oh, that's thing. It is. It's a it really is. lovely thing. It is. It's lovely. Um, Join us next episode. It's big, really big. I'm going to get yep. Gran off the couch for it. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll go to the couch and do it with him. Whatever is going to happen, he will be here for the uh, season finale. Yes, and I've got to tell you what happened after our episode last week. I did a reading for Harry T. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. You Some spirits came through. No, but I sent it to him and he said it was eerily accurate. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, yeah. Beautiful. Stay tuned for that. Be true. true. Lovely hanging with you. Be true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye.